So speaking of, of skin jobs, Will, you might appreciate this. My daughter is walking around the house in a hoodie with a, um, a unicorn, like an origami unicorn. <laughs> nice. Oh. Yeah, and I'm like, honey, do you, do you know where the origami unicorn comes from? I have no idea. And, and she's like, oh, I have no idea. And I'm like, well, it comes from Blade Runner. Oh, yeah, right, huh? Yeah. Oh. I didn't forgot all about that shit. Yeah, that's and I was cool. like, that you don't know how cool that is, and that's probably not why that shirt exists, but that's pretty damn cool. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Right? I'd agree. There's my pile, May. Nice. That oh yeah. So we did that's what we're working on, tiles. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to how do you turn the camera around? I want to show my shit off to you. Can you hear the sound effect? <laughs> like that's that's Alaska, like piles of wood just hanging out. Just yeah. doing, hanging out yeah. with stuff. Pile. And then that's the like pile. the finished product. The finished oh product, God. you know. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mine is so far away right now. <laughs> I am not walking over there. And I burned it up last night. Well, you so, keep your house like 77 degrees. It's like tropical in your house all winter. It's 90. It has to like be eight. James time. It has to be like 85, 90 to just walk around. So everybody can walk around their shorts, you know, hang out. Not like walk around your hoodie. Walk around your long pants. You know, I, may I may I add that like I pretty much live in long johns after like October one, like everything has a long john base. Not my in long my bedroom. Have a long john base. <laughs> <laughs> Not in my bedroom, <laughs> unless you were cutting weight. <laughs> It does get getting away. I, I, I need to let anyone who is going to watch this down the road know that May is a uh, world, ship, uh, world champion uh, jujitsu player. Um, <laughs> world shitter. <laughs> uh, Will, Will is the owner of a bookstore, and this dude, before he owned a bookstore, had the words yeah. bookworm tattooed on his knuckles. So, very, oh, yeah. very impressive. <laughs> yeah. uh, that was part of right. it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jacob has been reading hey. since, well, he never yeah. stopped reading. Uh, and we're all grateful for everyone here. So we're here today to discuss Dune. Can I do the real quick uh, Wikipedia breakdown on the film we watched last night? Yes. Roger. Okay. Roger, Roger. Dune is a 2021 American epic science fiction film. Directed by Dennis Villanueva with a screenplay, uh, screenplay by John Spates, Villanueva, and Eric Roth. It is the first of a planned two-part adaption of the 1965 novel of the same name by Frank Herbert, primarily covering the first half of the book. Set in the far future, it follows Paul Atreides as he and his family, the noble House Atreides, are thrust into a war for the dangerous desert planet Arrakis between the native Freeman people and the enemy invaders and the former rulers of Arrakis, the House Harkonnen. The film stars an ensemble cast of Timothy with two E's at the end, Shamalay, Rebecca Ferguson, Oscar Isaacson, Josh Brolin, Stellan Skarsgård, Dave Bautista, Stephen McKinley, Henderson, Zendaya, David Damastigeba, David Chang, Sharon Duncan Brewster, uh, Charlotte Ramping, Jason Momoa, and Javier Bardem. So we're going to have a little bit of fun with this today. For the film, I would like to mostly talk about the characters as, uh, as, as their, uh, their roles in other movies. Now, I've never read the book. Will, you have read the book. Uh, Jacob, you have read the book. May, have you read the book? Yes. Okay, I oh, got yeah. into about 30 minutes of the audio book. You all have me beat. <laughs> we to the, to the, the author biography, and that's about it. Yeah. About the author. All right. 
So, um, but first right now, off, I, I couldn't even imagine trying to read it now. Um, were you fans of, I'm assuming you were fans of the book. Like, Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing is my shit. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been a huge fan of the book and the series, like, forever. Yeah. Um, yeah, I read the book. Like, I, I remember probably early teens. And then as the movies came out, I was a huge fan of the movies. Probably watched the original Doom movie 10 times easily. <laughs> But, oh, yeah. yeah, huge fan. As a matter of fact, I just ordered the book today so I could reread it after watching it last night. I, I would yeah, also like I, the... Go ahead, man. I'm sorry. I, was, I wanted to reread it, too, because I wanted to see if they changed anything. Like, I don't know. It just seemed like it was a little different. Like you said, the original movie was a little different. And plus, we had Sting in the original movie, and it just he just made it awesome. But you know, <laughs> Dude, I'm like, now we got Aquaman, so he made it even better. But like, anyhow, that's from the chick appeal. point of view. He had no Yeah, appeal. yeah. <laughs> but I kind of wanted to see if they did change anything uh, from the original book to like, because I know they rewrite books, like, you know, they make a difference. Everybody's smoking but me. I'm going to go fucking smoke, too. Sorry, run, podcast. Run. You're, you're, totally, you're totally cool. Um, I didn't get my weed. So, so right now, Jacob is probably looking up um, the, the differences between the book and the films, uh, plural. Um, when you were looking at, uh, at Batista... Did you did you compare him to Sting or did you compare him to the original character? Because for me, I, I had to look at it as, is this Sting? Is he supposed to play Sting? I know that this isn't like the no. 18 movie, but- No, okay. I couldn't even imagine him as Sting at all. There was so, no- like, So Sting originally played uh, Fade and Raban. Yeah. And uh, Fade yeah. was a different character. And then the Batista, he was doing Raban, which was supposed to he be was, a meathead anyways. Like. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. There's no way he was supposed to play Fate because he's not sexy enough. And that guy was kind of like a, he was a, like a porn star on steroids type, you know, attitude, I thought. <laughs> he just wanted to do everything. You know? I was like, that's what it reminded me of. And then Sting kind of fit it. <laughs> Uh, anyhow, <laughs> it was back in the '80s. Everybody was a porn star that was popular. So, now, yeah. now Jacob's got to look up Sting porn. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, Llewellyn, then, um, then, then, let's turn it around a little bit. Did uh, Llewellyn from No Country for No uh, No Country for Old Men or uh, Corey Webster from Rad? Do you think that he did a really good Professor X in this movie? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to. I don't even know that. Which guy was that? Is he? Uh, is not, uh, not Dr. Lee. So Professor X. Oh, the chick. But no, Jean Luc Picard. Jean Luc Picard oh. in the first film. Um, and in this film, um. Uh, it was Josh Brolin. But how Wait, do you feel Duncan. like the, char the character's interacted? Duncan. Okay. I, well, it just, it's different to uh, even compare them. Yeah. Because, like, you know, when you have a visual picture of one thing, it kind of sticks in your mind. And then if somebody tries to play it with a different person, it doesn't fit. It's like, oh, that's kind of like what they've been doing with Batman. They're always changing him. You know, and it's like, oh, that's fucked up. Just leave Batman alone, like the same character. It's hard to picture a different Batman every time you're like, Michael Keaton played a good Batman, <laughs> like, you know? And then the other guy came in and he was too sexy to be Batman. Anyhow, sorry. I thought as far as the character went, it went was well, like, the military mastermind or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. The uh, like a, a cranky old man. Uh, 
but but I thought Sean Luke Picard definitely pulled it off better. Yeah, he seemed more teachery, not so neat. The other guy just seemed like he wanted to kick the shit out of him, no matter what he did, and he was gonna fuck his world up. And then he hugged him. That's kind of abusive, you know, like it's <laughs> true in the face, try to stab you. But I love you, bro. What the fuck? That would be so weird growing up like that. I don't know. It, it, it is a weird happen. way of growing up. But in, in jujitsu, you do the fist bump before you try to break someone's shoulder. So, you know, like. Well, I, mean, kind of, I don't know. Granted, they weren't flow rolling. They weren't. This wasn't a warm up. They were literally trying to kill each other with knives. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was trying to stab his ass, like, slowly. Well, break through the barrier. That's kind of crazy. Apparently, Ronda Rousey's mother used to wake her up with uh, arm bars. I heard that. And I also heard that, like, if she was in competition, she would go behind her competitors and, like, fucking knee check them. <laughs> so they would dump over. She was like, yeah, bitch, I'm that bitch. Like, I, was like, I would have fucking clocked her. I don't know. I'd have been on that. No, bitch. <laughs> like, because you can't let a bully do that. That's a bully. That's right. unsportsman's like. So are we Anyhow, saying sorry. then? Are, are we saying that John Luke Picard was far more sportsmanlike than Corey Webster? I think uh, John Luke Picard was more aristocratic, which made yeah, it like yeah, more yeah, yeah. Um, I like Will's big words. He fucking played it right. <laughs> I said, he did. He set the role. He was like father figure, but yet he would kick your ass. The other guy just seemed like he just wanted to beat you down. He made me nervous. I was like, oh, I'm going to fuck up. Um, I, I did like, I, I thought it was interesting that um, one of the leaders of the free men, uh, Javier Bottom, uh, was also in No Country for Old Men. That's where I saw that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he uh, was... He did really good. He played a good role. I like how he uh, he was like, fuck it. He was going to take the chick on no matter what. He was very surprised when she whooped his ass. And he respected that. He took it, I mean, he took it well, like, oh, no shit. She just kicked my ass in front of everybody. Yeah, I like oh, yeah. that. Well, that's, the, that's the introduction to the weirding. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was it was cool how it was played out, you know. They thought they were going to be safe and okay. And she's like, well, I guess I got to fight for my shit. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, okay, so I, as a child, never made it past the first 30 minutes of the movie. <laughs> just because once they took out the, the heart blood, it just freaked me the fuck out. Like, Oh, yeah. And, it spewed everywhere. And... <laughs> There were so many things that, because I'm not familiar with the book, I was expecting because I was familiar with the movie. It seems like this particular movie, there was only maybe one reference that you might get from the other film. Um, which, on one hand, I like a lot in, in newer movies that, that seem to be a lot of remakes and a lot of, like, hugging the nostalgia of like the the a series that got us involved in the first place i don't know if you saw many saints of newer save yourself two hours and do something else for two hours um <laughs> oh no i didn't but, see that <laughs> but the, the film existed to remind us of why we like the sopranos mm -hmm. and maybe get us to watch the sopranos again but it didn't make us give any more of a shit about the sopranos as a show it just kind of sucked it was a way to kind of like, oh, there's a there's a reference to this person. There's a reference to this event. There is a th this is why this person is the way they are, kind of, um, you know. But the film itself was shit. Um, not fun to watch. Find something else to do for two hours. I guess is what I'm saying. Were you? Did you enjoy that there were references to the original? Were you? How did you feel uh, about not seeing a lot of reference <laughs> to the first film? Um, like we see in, in remakes now that there's a lot of references to the original material or the original film or, or the film series um, just to get that sort of that, the heart beating, the nostalgia of it. But there wasn't a so lot. For of me, 
like for me, I, I think like the, the original film, even the miniseries, kind of stayed true to the story of the, the, uh, that Frank Herbert put out. So I think with this film, they referenced it enough of the book to still maintain the same kind of nostalgia storyline with the movie. Uh, I was looking forward to Heart Plug, even the weird, creepy, like, rub his hand in the blood. Yeah, and all, he got all so that. weird about it. Yeah, yeah, like in the old movie um, that was not done in this one. So, But as far as, like, the nostalgia going, I mean, I was like a teenager all again watching that thing. I was just so excited. Ooh, here it is. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Very exciting. The helicopters got me really excited. I jumped out almost out of the seat. I was like, oh, check out those helicopters. And Will just looked at me and laughed. I was like, oh my gosh, that shit is awesome. They were really cool. The dragonfly helicopters. That has to be the bomb shit right there. So, um, so the film really did take itself from the book then? Yes. Okay, do you think that it does a disservice to the source material when you try and compound it into a two and a half hour movie when you had to have a, a full mini series <laughs> story before? Um, I think like I think by them splitting it that they're still maintaining the story, like trying to do two parts for one book. Uh, I think that's like because the original like this part one, I think they really gave uh two and a half hours to build up for the rest of the series because like that, yeah. that, i think that's important to establish the house of trades house arconan establish the fremen and uh the emperor and the spice and i think that the pacing of it went really well for like to do the novel justice because like in the original movie they tried to cram all of this information in um in like a two hour hours. And a half. Like, uh, like, was it like, hour? It was, I said two hours. I think it was. Thought. Is it the original one? Yeah. I, I thought it was. I two think hours? it was really. Okay. It was, yeah, it was like two hours of. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> right. Uh, and then they kind of just rushed through everything to try to get this whole story in two hours. Where, whereas now, like with this one, they, they I think splitting it up was a uh, um, a good idea because they could still maintain the uh, uh, the story. Um but have time to tell it. Yeah. And I like how they left the worms there at the end. To, or, are we spoiler alert here? We, we always said spoiler oh, yeah. alert at the very beginning. And at the intro, uh -huh. I'll say spoiler alert. Tell, tell them <laughs> I everything. Just, I just, I just oh, like God. how they introduced the worm writing. Like, you know, like there, there's a real uh, tie with the worm and the friend. And there's a real closeness i mean to them it's not just we just get use them every once in a while or they're in control of everything there's actually a relationship and that worm riding because i mean you got just like a horse it's got to trust you it's got to you know so i figure that those guys who are wor i like that at the end that was cool i was like oh my gosh they're gonna show the worm riding and the worm faced up and didn't munch him i like how it, it just kind of stared at him with all of its teeth yeah. Yeah, that made a. I didn't. I didn't get that at the time, and now that you mention it, so the, the so the worms and the fremen and the fremen, not Freeman. Okay, so the fremen um, and the worms have a connection. So the worm understood the the value of Paul Atreides, is what you're saying? Yeah, like he knew yeah. who he was. They they already had a tie. Like they have a tie. You know how like native people say they have a tie with the earth and all that. The frame had a tie with the worm. They were tied, the planet was tied in together, and he that worm recognized him as who he was. I was like, oh, look at that shit. Or else it could have munched him. It would have like consumed. It didn't. You know. So, um, so then when <laughs> spoiler alert, uh, when the kid that becomes Willy Wonka in the new Willy Wonka series kills the guy in the knife fight. Was it then an honor to be killed by the the, the hero by the the neo the yeah. well yeah it was an honorable death very much so whoever he was it fighting was. against and killed them it was honorable yeah yeah that culture well they brought him back they brought him back well they brought they do that to take the water 
you know, like they drain the water. He gives back the water to them. You know, that's the whole thing. But it was, I mean, he had to prove himself, and he did. When he fought that guy and beat one of their best fighters, he proved it, that he was the guy. It was no joke, so. Right. Like, even the connection to the worms, like they say, you know, he'll know, he'll know our ways like he was born to him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, all, like, all of the prophecy that leads up to that, like, even the worms already have that connection to him. Uh, and yeah. that's like, it, even the mouse, right? They're showing the little mouse. Uh, later in the series, that becomes his name. They ask, like, what what do you call the mouse on the moon? And they say, Muad'Dib. Um, so anyways, like, even the little mouse from the desert has a connection to him. So, like, he's already connected to all of these creatures on rackets, including the friend. Yeah. Um, I do like that in, in the short amount of listening to the Audible, um, I like the casting of Paul Atreides in this more than I like the casting in the first one. In, in the first in, in the first film, Paul Atreides was almost a man, but they describe him in the book as like a fifteen year old boy, as a as a child, not 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 a, not a full grown man. Kyle McLaughlin right. went on to investigate murders not long after that as a member of the <laughs> FBI. So like he was a full grown <laughs> man who was able to go to college. By that time, <laughs> um, right. So, um, I I like my concern. I like the I like the film now. Looking back on it, more than I did last night, um, because I didn't have a this great a depth. Uh, I didn't have as much of the depth as as y'all have provided today. What I'm um, my fear is that with a film being so expensive to make that you run into a problem with uh is there now a possibility of them uh not continuing the series because there were more uh there were more books in uh in the dune series uh before david lynch got his hands on there uh siri and i have been speaking recently uh he was talking to me about the 19 uh the original like 1977 dune um you can probably talk about <laughs> that for a little bit but even david lynch's uh film wasn't the first time someone had tried to make dune and do it justice it's a big right. film it's a big story and it's a big universe i think that when you run when you make these huge science fiction films they cost a lot of money to make you run a very very big risk of if the film is not successful uh do we see the <laughs> continuation of this story or now do we have to learn to read again <laughs> well they can build Whoa. their following like in between the comic books and the book uh people fan base you know they're building a following so there's people who watch that little dune series and if they didn't if they came to that movie last night they're gonna say oh i need to watch that dune series because that's you know the way it ended they're not gonna know why did it end like that that was kind of stupid i need to look into that so I think it'll probably spark up a new fan base and restir the old fan base. They probably already have that second movie made. And they're just waiting to see how this does and then release it. You know. I think I I was talking with Beth this morning about that. I think what, as far as uh fan base goes, it's really gonna strike the uh the old fan base. So it's got everybody who was a fan to begin with. They're rushing out to see it. They're excited, but it's all old people, right? I think uh, uh, if you're just getting into it, this movie pr probably is going to move uh, a little slow if you don't have any background. Uh, right. It might not strike like a strong fucking following just off of that part one. I think it's because there's just so much character establishment that if you don't already have source to fall back on, then you're like, well, what the fuck? It ended like right when it was getting good. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's why I think they'll make them read the book. They'll look into it and go, hey, oh shit, there's going to be another part. Or even the comic books, you know what I mean? It'll make them start draw, and they'll draw another fan, uh, re-spark a fan base, restart one. Not a huge one. So here's it's not a, a little, Star Wars. So here's a little tidbit though, like that I found very interesting was, uh, so I want to read the book again. We have a copy at the bookstore, but Beth already uh, is getting it to someone else. So this morning I was gonna, I ordered one. So 
when I'm looking at the new mm -hmm. price for the book, which is around ten dollars for a used for a new copy, right? Uh, right. I'm looking at the used books. I'm expecting five six dollars. Uh, the used books are comparable, or if not more expensive, than the new books. So I think there's a huge resurgence in book sales, just Dune itself. I would try, try, try to buy a copy of Dune off the internet right now, and you're paying anywhere from 10 to $16 just for that, yeah. for a copy of this paperback book, you know? And it's selling new for 10 to $16. I mean, that's a 100% like uh, uh, value being maintained by this movie. So book sales are just crazy right now. So I think it's yeah. a little bit of both. Yeah, I think it'll, I think it's already going to spark just, I mean, that's how it's got to work. It's not going to catch them by all the action because that part didn't happen yet. You know, like no. you said, in the original, uh, the old movie, they crammed everything together and they kind of just made the action happen. Like all, like it was kind of blender mix, you know, so. I hope they come out with a part. I hope they have that part too, at least by maybe spring. Maybe it'll be, you know, they'll try it in the early summer. Uh, so Jacob, do you know anything about uh, a follow-up to uh, to the Dune? Uh, is it? Do we know anything about a part two coming soon, or is there? <laughs> uh, are they, are they taking a wait and see approach to uh, to this film? I was reading an article this morning that they're not going to do the old method of it's got to make its money back and then some before they'll consider it. They're looking at the analytics for HBO Go, which a lot of us weren't expecting that to factor in, but they said they're going to factor that in. Um, huh. Right now, I think it's made 200, or by Sunday, they expect it'll have made 200 million worldwide. Um, there was an article I read that said they needed, they've spent about 330 million uh, when you factor in the budget, advertising, and the cost of delays. So some people are expecting that they need to make 330 million to 400 million before uh, the Warner Brothers is gonna look at the sequel. But that article this morning made it sound a lot more hopeful that we will see the sequel. Now, I would think that they would, like we talked about last night, I would think they would take the uh, uh, Lord of the Rings approach where you know, they'd already filmed uh, yeah. part one and part two and like just, just do the CG continuity. Yeah, yeah. Then like they already have all the, the film footage they need. They just need to do the CG, bang out one, see how it turns out. And then they may say they, they, they make their money and then some. And then the, they can automatically dump part two on the heels yeah. of that, you know, just to, to keep that money coming in. Yeah. All right. I think that's a very strong possibility. If it's a if it's a big strong production, I mean, but keep in mind, like Lord of the Rings was mandatory reading in every school around the world uh, since you know the the dawn of <laughs> it's the dawn of the written word. Um, <laughs> there was the Bible, and then there was the saga of Middle Earth and the little people with their. <laughs> Uh -huh. Dune almost has uh, it seems like it has a more select fan base than that um, I mean I can understand why they would want um, why they'd want to take a wait and see approach but it seems like if you've got everyone there why not why not do it right then you know like you've got everyone in this in the spot uh, you might as well try and bang out as much uh, as much stuff as you can um, just because when is the next time you're going to get Javier Bottom, the kid that plays uh, Willy Wonka, the, the girl from a Spider-Man, and all of these other people in the same room together. Um, so, you know, it's the, the chance of getting this done again, getting everyone together again, is going to be a lot harder in the future, especially if this film is successful. A lot more people are going to... Uh, inclined to hire you know so and so and so and so um I, I don't know what i don't know who's knocking down josh brolin's door to make thrashing too um <laughs> I, i'd pay to see it i, I want to know where Corey Webster is. i want to know i want to know yeah. what's 
uh, uh, with uh, with the daggers. What's up with the daggers? You know, Christian Hosoy mm. seems to be doing all right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Maybe like that, maybe like a cross reference, get some thrashing too, and what was in rad, like and rad. Like, I, oh my yeah. god, I have to rewatch rad. That is hilarious. So let me know. I, I'm not this sure. Did um, did Josh like die in the attack? A B. Yes. Flashback. Smoked a lot. I might have been shrooming. At uh yes he did yeah yeah um but like so i don't know like in the old movie uh Duncan's i thought he so ends up come back right they end up like he ends up being one of yeah the, like his right hand the framing the framing warrior like they found him wandering through the desert later i guess after the siege or whatever and they right, kept so him Right. I don't remember enough of the I don't remember enough of the book to really like say how the novel cast it. So I don't know. Um, I don't know. I would like to see. I would like to see the origin story of how Corey Webster became the angry warrior. Um, dude, he was so mad, huh? He was I, angry. He, he seemed like an unhappy dude. Like if, I if, thought he, yeah. If your entire mm -hmm. life is ba is based on assault and death and like trying to kill a little boy, like that's your job is to try and 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 get that little boy ready to not be killed by you. Seems like a pretty rough gig. Like you've got a lot of, I don't know what else. Are Anger you issues. <laughs> like, like in your off time, do you crochet? Do you read books about not trying to kill little people? <laughs> no, he should get laid. I don't. I don't think it's crocheting though. Crocheting is actually like pretty. Decent. He played an instrument. Shit, he did play an instrument. If I'm not mistaken, like he had his little Patrick guitar, Stewart. His long guitar thing, and they actually, I think, oh, they yeah. mentioned to it in the film. Where's your thingamabobber? I'm not playing it today. Um, <laughs> I don't think he played it enough. No, and now he can't anymore because he's dead. They killed Corey Webster. <laughs> he's dead. He can play it in heaven. He'll be in the orchestra. He won't have to kill anyone ever again. No, he won't um, be angry. <laughs> Uh, so I have um, I have the the freeware version of of uh, Zoom, which means it's going to cut off in about five minutes. Do we want to keep this thing going? Yeah, five minutes. Let's burn it up. All right, burn up the five minutes. Because like, like I think uh, the ending. I thought I was kind of curious as we're watching it, like what how they were going to kill part one. Um, I liked how where they stopped rather than it becoming uh, uh getting too far into his adaptation of becoming a fremen and uh all of that but i like how i know like in the original they don't bring the worm writing in until later but i like how they threw it in there like what may said the, the show yeah. the connection between the people and then kind of it's like it's a good place for a beginning with without leaving it too much cliffhangery you know yeah right yeah, I wasn't sure how they were gonna they get that like that segue, you know, where where well his eyeballs like... didn't change. You're right. right about that. His eyes didn't change yet. So yeah. in the a movie, remember his eyeballs changed real quick, like they all of a sudden they got their suits, they were in the cave, bam, eyeballs changed. He took up with that chick, he was drinking the water, like bam, he was going through the moments, you know. Like it happened really fast. They crammed so much right. in, like you said. Right. And like even in that version of the movie, like the connection to the worm wasn't established until they drank the water of life. And they're like, yeah. they drink the water of life, all the worms come up and they're like, oh, oh, um, yeah. You're the worm. <laughs> yeah. 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 I like and, how and they like, did bring up that worm. That was really cool. And the, 
and the swords they made the con they didn't have connection with that special blade in the old movie you know the original in this one they have a connection with the blade it's being its teeth and how special because you actually had to go and get that tooth you know what i mean or the worm had to give it or whatever or you went to maybe if they had some kind of burial ground or whatever anyhow it was a special sword it wasn't just steel it was yeah it yeah, was a tooth knife. yeah i thought that was pretty cool yeah i imagine <laughs> if there was like a worm graveyard though there's enough teeth in yeah there, like, to have a knife for everybody like they could <laughs> <laughs> but if it's right. a sacred place, what if there are like little baby worm guards protecting the worm cemetery? Well, I think Maybe. it was passed on because that chick said her aunt gave her hers. So I think yeah. it was passed, they were passed on. They weren't just like everybody got one. Yeah. I think your aunt or your uncle or your father or your mother, you know what I mean? It was passed on and then when you died or your children or whatever. A tooth from the largest sandworm on the planet. Yeah. Ancient. Why didn't they have guns? Like they had a gun. So they were like, head, they like, did. Yeah. Uh, Paul had stolen one of their guns um, and was holding on them. And then Zendaya came up and told him that he couldn't use it. Yeah, but why, why doesn't anyone have guns? Like, it why attracts the worms yeah. because the noise attracts the worms. And they're, you know, they're not as easy to make. Bullets. Sand well. gets everywhere. <laughs> but I mean, well, like, uh, well, uh, no, you got a good point. Cause I thought, of, yeah, I thought about that when they were doing like the the starter car and all that. They're all coming into the siege, um, and everybody's fucking coming at them like they're goddamn uh, 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 feudal Europe. You know, they got, <laughs> they got like their retro futuristic. Yeah, well, they're they're unloading off the off yeah. the ships. And, but they've all got knives, like, and swords. Yeah. Why don't they have guns? Why don't they think, yeah, yeah. think that, that would be a great time if the guy in front of you has a sword to have a gun, all right? Right. Like, sword I think a gun, that's cool. Pow, 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 pow. But do I they, think, in yeah, yeah. the future, do they not have guns? I think part of that is the, the shields. When you're looking yeah. in order to deliver the kills, oh, it right. had to be yeah. slower. It had to be slow. Because if it's above a certain velocity, it just ricochets off the shields. But I think that if you're close. shooting a gun at a shield, it would still weaken the shield. Oh, yeah. Or it would be enough of an irritant. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I know. think it was just... I'm sure. They right. killed faster with the blades at a slower velocity than a bullet. I like okay. that. That's I'll take your answer. word for it. You read the books. I like I'll double check, though. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because think about those darts. Even the dart, when he threw the dart to the king... Uh, the dart in the duke's back remember it was slow moving and it was in the spot he couldn't push it off you know he couldn't get it off before it penetrated his shield because it was right in the center he wasn't stretchy enough if he were more flexible in the shoulders he could have reached down there and smacked it that happens with bodybuilders though you know i know they get all but, tight in the shoulders uh, puffy. Yeah. <laughs> so according to the dune fandom website the technical revolution caused by the introduction of the Holtzman shield had made projectile weapons largely obsolete, but they were still oh. favored by soldiers over the more dangerous and less reliable LAS gun. 